What's up Flex Gang? These are my Nvidia and monitor settings. Let's get active. So first things first, we're gonna go over my Nvidia settings. You just right click your desktop, click Nvidia control panel. In PUBG, I play with 1728 by 1080 resolution. This is not resolution that you will find in the list naturally. So what you have to do is you have to open your control panel and click customize here. And then tick this box that says enable resolutions not exposed by the display and then click create a custom resolution. In this box, you'll type in 1728 and then test. And I already have it, so it'll say this. Uh, but for those of you that haven't got it, it'll basically ask you if it's okay. You click yes again, and then you click apply. Once you have that resolution created, it'll appear in this little custom section right here at the top of this drop-down box. And once that's there, you're all set. You can still keep your desktop at 1920 by 1080. So I'm still playing with my desktop at 1920 by 1080, but when I open up my game, I will have the, uh, I will have the option in settings right here for 1728 by 1080. So yeah, first things first, that's the resolution. Now, the real juice that you guys really wanna get into, I know all of you guys probably are frothing for this. So here's where the magic happens. This is the 3D settings. It's very simple, actually. Most of these settings don't affect PUBG, like ambient occlusion. This is actually what in CSGO helped people see through smokes. Um, but you can't change this. This doesn't affect PUBG. It's not, some of these settings don't work on the, on the direct decks. I pretty much run with all of the anti-aliasing settings off. This is because the game looks pretty smooth, regardless of them being on or off. And I think that you actually gain a graphical and FPS advantage with these things being off. The main one that, is quite disputed that a lot of pros will leave on is this one right here, the gamma correction. I've done a little bit of research and I determined that it was best to leave this off. This is because what gamma correction does, if you have a bright object next to a dark object or like a high gamma object next to a low gamma object and they're touching on your screen, this setting will basically blend the line. It'll alter the brightness of where those two objects meet so that they look kind of smoother together, if that makes sense. So turning this off basically means that you can have a black next to a white or like a player standing in front of a wall, for example, and they'll contrast against each other really well. There's no blending done. Uh, so I think this helps you see people who are coming out of smokes or just detect people who are on your screen in front of walls fast. I think it helps boost contrast. So I'm definitely a big fan of leaving this one off. Despite what you might think about the latency mode, off is actually the best option for input lag. It's surprising because you would expect turning this to on would give you less latency, right? But the way that the, the, way that the GPU and the CPU handle the game, off will give you the best input lag and the highest FPS. So this is why most pros run off. Next up, we have the power management mode. Very simple, you just change this to prefer maximum performance, no biggie. And then the texture filtering section. So texture filtering, if you set the, this uh, texture filtering quality to high performance, it'll automatically change this anisotropic sample optimization to on. Um, this is ideal in my eyes. I think that that'll give you the best FPS and make the game look super simple. I'm a big fan of visual simplicity. It helps you see things faster. So big fan of the high performance here. The negative LOD bias, I 100% recommend leaving on allow because it keeps your FPS smooth as you're flicking between things or as you're just browsing, moving your mouse. Um, I've tried having this on clamp for a while and it's just, it really impacted my sprays uh, and my FPS while spraying. So 100% leave this on allow and then uh, turn vertical sync off, even though it's no biggie, probably shouldn't be on anyway. That's basically the gist of it. Very simple. I basically run all default settings here and I change my color settings exclusively through my monitor. This is because I'm a little skeptical that changing these settings could somehow hurt my FPS, even though I know that's totally untrue. I just I just prefer to change all my settings through my monitor. Uh, so that's super simple. The next tab is adjust desktop size and position. This one is quite a uh, debated topic. I see a lot of people saying you should perform scaling on GPU. Fairly certain display is the best. I run full screen scaling so that I have stretch resolution. I've tried playing black bars before, which would be this aspect ratio one, and it was quite nice, but uh, I think full screen is definitely optimal for PUBG, especially if if you're playing stretch res. If you're playing native res, when I used to play native res for the least input lag, I would just click no scaling. That way I just don't even have to think about whether there's like any anything else. I just, if you're skeptical, click no scaling, that'll give you the least input lag. But yeah, if you're using any stretch res, full screen, and then perform scaling on display, override the scaling mode set by games and programs. Last but not least, uh, when it comes to NVIDIA, if you open up GeForce Experience and you scroll down here, there's the in-game overlay. I have this disabled because I'm very skeptical that if I have shadow play running, my bullets don't hit. So I've always had this disabled and basically I started being good when I turned it off. I hate to say it, but 
it's the truth. That's why I don't make montages. It's because every time I have shadow play on, for some reason, I just can't hit a bullet. So in-game overlay, I've always run off. Uh, I just figured squeeze out the extra performance, why not? Even though the ViewSonic monitor is my favorite, this is the monitor that I have to use at tournaments. So here are my tournament settings, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can replicate these. For the sake of recording this video, I've had to leave Diac off because otherwise the camera will just completely flicker and it's really difficult to see anything. But Diac Plus, I usually use premium. I really, really, really think Diac is a very valuable tool for PUBG because it completely deletes motion blur almost and it just helps you track when you're spraying. It just makes the game so much more clear while you're spraying and it helps that DMR uh, bounce the clarity of like the shot timing of the DMR. It's very, it's very handy. So Diac Plus on premium 100% of the time. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It gives you, I think a millisecond of input lag and then just deletes motion blur. So absolutely worth it. Um, brightness, I run 97. Um, this is subjective, depends on how bright it is outside of my window. But come tournament time at night time, I will run 97 uh, brightness. Black EQ, I just run 20 out of 20. I actually think it's super important. It's kind of, it's very similar to Gamma. The reality is that it's less impactful on the game than Gamma is, but it's not to the same extremity that brightness is. It's very nuanced. But basically, I prefer 20 out of 20. Color vibrance, 20 out of 20 as well, since I don't use digital vibrance in the NVIDIA control panel. Low blue light, obviously, I keep on zero. This is so that, uh, I mean, I think it's pointless. I, I have played with it on before, up to three. Um, when I'm just gaming on stream, that's just to save my eyes if I have a headache or anything. Gamma, I leave on gamma one. I prefer that just to have a really bright game. Uh, the user define color temperature, I just leave 95, 95, 95. I've always used this. Uh, I've experimented with having higher reds, higher greens, higher blues, but I just think that my game ends up looking washed out if I increase any of them. So definitely a big fan of the 95, 95, 95 color temperature. For color weakness, I just leave a, I just leave it off, obviously. When it comes to the picture, so like I said again, Diac Plus should be on premium, but for the sake of recording, it is off. My brightness, 97. My contrast, 87. I actually run extremely high contrast. Uh, I think it boosts how easy it is to see players, especially on a Wrangle and Miramar when these players are ridge peaking or coming out of a smoke. I just think it's a really powerful tool. Um, I would recommend running a decently high contrast because it just, it, it really helps you detect those players quickly. I mean, I would recommend you actually just stand in the lobby, look at a couple players and turn your contrast up and down and see how it affects how much they uh, pop out on your screen. But yeah, I, I like quite a high contrast. I actually got the high contrast idea from ZP Yarn from New Happy. I stole the number from him, 87, testing it out, feels great. Sharpness, I run 10. I have to, you know, because I don't run any sharpness in game. Um, I really am enjoying the 10 sharpness on the monitor recently. Really, this is preference. Um, I would recommend anywhere between five to 10. Uh, it's really up to you. I'm experimenting with this because I've seen that a lot of the really good CSGO pros are using it. So I kind of figured I would give it a go. 10 sharpness does feel really good for seeing people in smokes. And I know I keep bringing up smokes, but that really is an important thing when it comes to PUBG comp. Like so frequently you'll be shooting people who are in smokes. A full team is smoked off. A guy is peeking you around a smoke and just having that extra millisecond jump on him is what's going to win you the game and the fight. So yeah, 10 sharpness has been working really well for me recently. I really enjoy that. In combination with the contrast, I just think it makes players stand out very well. AMA, I always leave on a high. This is basically the response time of the monitor uh, on Zowie. So what this setting will change is actually the voltage that goes through each pixel. What this means is that when something new happens on your screen, the response time, if it's on premium, will be very fast. You'll see it happen fast. But when you move your screen across a scene and the pixels are constantly changing color, they will overshoot the color that they're supposed to be and you'll end up with this ghosting effect. It's very noticeable with uh, this website called the UFO test. Uh, so I would recommend giving it a look if you are interested. But basically, after some research, I figured that high AMA is best pretty much all the time. Uh, premium gives you the fastest response time of the monitor. But honestly, it just makes your scene so blurry when you move your mouse around and it really distracts you from the gameplay. So high is very good still. The response time is still very, very fast. So I would recommend using it on high. This is very standard. Most CSGO pros use this. That is it for the monitor settings.